Welcome once again to a Tin Dog podcast. Slightly different from usual because this is one of two podcasts that I'll be releasing as part of a Doctor Who podcast alliance. The first one, an interview with Fraser Hines, the guy who played Jamie with the second Doctor and of course in the five Doctors and again in the two Doctors. I'd like to thank Steve for organising this and making part of the Hoover's convention. The second interview, which you'll hear very soon, is with Nicola Bryant is with Nicola Bryant, and that's just simply marvellous. So keep an eye out on the feeds for that. Of course, there'll be normal reviews and chat and, well, everything you've come to expect from the Tin Dog podcast very shortly. But I just want to thank everyone that helped out with the interview and basically had a fantastic day. So here you go. So no questions, right? No, not uh, at all. Uh, uh, I was going to ask you about your big finish work that you've been doing of late, because you did a companion chronicle where you were playing Jamie Alder. Mm. Uh, you did that first, mm. and then after that you came back as apparently Jamie but Alder, but slightly different. Now I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't heard them, but that was a few years ago, so I'm imagining everyone's heard it now. And you were kind of a fictional version of Jamie? Yeah, well the, well, the first one I did was the Helican Prime. Mm-hmm. That was Companions Chronicle in, I think, 2007. Uh, and that was you know, sort of young, young Jamie and, and Patrick. And I just happened to do one of, uh, a, a line like Patrick, and the director went, oh, actually, that's, that sounds like Patrick. I said, well, I, be, I do this sort of gag about Patrick and I, you know, in um, conventions. So he said, well, just do it. So I did it. Um, then I didn't hear anything for about two years. I thought, God, they've either sold none or it must have been really rubbish. So then I got phone calls, oh, we'd like you to do another Companions Chronicle. Oh, great. And this was called The, the Glorious Revolution. And that, to me, was, was, was a lovely story. Uh, not that Helicon Prime wasn't, but the, the Glorious Revolution was because Jamie was still the young Jamie. Um, but he was in his time, you know, the times of James I. So it wasn't a space bubble or spaceship. He actually knew the costumes were, you know, what he was used to. And... and I said, do you want me to do lines like with Patrick? You know, they said, oh, yeah, can you do Patrick again? And I, and I said to David Richardson, the producer, but Patrick's got more dialogue here. Don't I get two fees? <laughs> he said, no, you still get the same, the one fee. But I love doing Patrick. You, see, because, you know, I love the guy, working with him, and for three years we had a happy, happy time. But the, the Doctor Who magazine, when uh, Glorious Revolution came out, great writer blowing my own trumpet but I just love it because it said uh, it, was, it was lovely to hear Hines and Troughton working together after all these years then I realised wait a minute Troughton died in 87 <laughs> therefore Hines is arguing with himself yeah. uh, because that's the way I do it doing rather than do all Jamie's lines Which then they do all time. Patrick's I just stand in the booth and I've got Patrick's lines blue for Tarnis and Jamie's red for the kilt sort of thing so I, I just talk like that you know which, which it's great you know it's um it stretches you as an actor, but you know, you know, you don't want it to be too easy. Did Patrick ever hear you do his an impression of him? No. You didn't do it to him. No, no it, it, it didn't come out till you know after he had died. Uh, it, it just so happened that you know we were talking about uh, the Emperor Dalek. We always think she'd be the Empress because it looks like she's got gold bra on. I think <laughs> you know when you look at it, you know, all the black. <laughs> it should be the Empress Dalek, and obviously she's the Mother Dalek. But they always called her the Emperor. And just because we're in black and white, it's only when I saw the picture in colour. Actually, yeah, it should be the Empress. But my line was, look at the balls on that thing, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't say it. Uh, and I, we, we were laughing and giggling. I think Paddy Russell, the director, tearing hair out. For goodness sake, grow up. Grow. In the end, we changed the look at the size of that thing, Doctor. So, <laughs> speed on years later to the two Doctors, my first line, when Patrick and I are in the TARDIS, look at the size of that space station, Doctor. And I changed it to, look at the size of that thing, Doctor. And John Nathan Turner said, no, no, stop, stop, read through, read through. No, 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 no. It says, look at the size of that space station. And Patrick went, no, no, no. At the beginning of every show, Jamie always says, look at the size of that thing, Doctor. And I go, yes, Jamie, it is a big one, isn't it? (laughs) 
<laughs> so that's how it came about. So I told that story sort of years later. Uh, in fact, if you see the, um, the Seeds of Death, when we land in that museum, uh, I've got it in my one-man... Sh- I've got, I do a one-man Doctor Who show. I would show I've got clips from all the Doctor Who's right up, up to the present day. We walk into that, and I go, hey, look at the size of that thing, Doctor Adelibbing. And he goes, yes, yeah, it is rather large, isn't it? But that's, that's it. So we, uh, we try to get that line in every time. So that's how I started to do it, just those, that one little story. And that's when they said, well, actually, you sound like perhaps, you know, do for the big finish. Uh, so and, and I love working with Big Finish. They're, they're, you know, they're, I think they've helped a lot to keeping the the Doctor Who alive w- when it came off the air. Yeah. And working with Colin was great fun because we got on so so well together in, in the two Doctors. We'd known each other over the years. We, in fact, I think he married one of my old girlfriends. Um, so you know, we we know each other inside and out, sort of <laughs> so to speak. And um, uh, w- when we did the. the but that was, as you say, that was kind of the, without spoiling. Yeah, it was, we, it was Jamie with a slightly different take. Yeah, because he, he started, he started as, as Donald, you know, or whatever. And then he kind of mellowed a, a little bit, sort of, yeah. yeah. But you did play it as though the events in War Games had wiped his memory and he couldn't remember who the Doctor was and he had to develop yeah. a relationship with the Doctor again. Yeah, but funny as I, I saw the War Games the other day for a documentary, uh, well, the other day, six months ago, and... Uh, in actual fact, Patrick says, will they forget me? Mm-hmm. And the Time Lord says, not entirely. They'll remember their first story with you. Mm. Now, my first story was the Highlanders, which ended me getting into the TARDIS and waving goodbye to my lad. Mm-hmm. So I'd still remember. Yeah. I'd remember getting to this blue box, flying off into space. So his memory wasn't entirely erased, mm-hmm. was it? Mm-hmm. When you look at it that way... Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The end of the Highlanders, it didn't go... And then the next story, let's go and get Jamie. My first story that I ended with me yeah. getting into the TARDIS and waving goodbye to Kirsty and my lad. So the Time Lord didn't exist. And then they went and messed it up with the Five Doctors when you were a, you were a ghost. Yeah, yes, but that was, uh, <laughs> but that was quite right. But that was fine because I mentioned the Brigadier, you see, yeah. and Patrick quite rightly would have said, well, hang on, you would have read him the first story, but the Brigadier was not yeah. in the first story. So that, that's, that, that was quite fine but that was I mean originally I was in the five doctors I was supposed to be with Patrick all the way through and the brigadier was going to be with John Pertwee but Emmerdale Farm I'd just done Panto and I said oh I need another six weeks off and they wouldn't release me so no no you've got to come back to Emmerdale so I rang John Nathan Turner I said the ITV won't release me I can't, I can't. so he said well I'll tell you what um, if you get any time off come and do you just let me know and I actually rang him so I've got next Wednesday Thursday off he said well I want you in the show so Wednesday I went down, we did the, the, the five doctors, fooled around, Patrick and I, and John Nathan Turner said, I, I just think it was like I put you and Patrick in a prop cupboard for 16 years and wound you up and <laughs> wheeled you back on. How do you find you doing some more? So I'm, I'm definitely, count me in. So that's done. If I'd got the script for the five doctors, which I did, and so John Nathan Turner said, I'm not coming all the way to London to go, no, stand back, Doctor. No, ah, I can't be bothered to do that. I wouldn't have done the two Doctors. So I was, I was so pleased that I said, "Yeah, I'll do it," because I wanted to work with Patrick again. Never seen it work. <clears throat> no, and uh, I, I, I re- agreed then to go back to, to Emmerdale, and I was kicking myself because I think if I'd said to John Nathan Turner, "You, you've only you got Perry and the Doctor, you haven't got a male companion. Why don't I stay like sixteen years?" ago, you know, when I first joined after the Highlanders, and I, I think J&T would have said, do you want to, yeah, shall we? And they could have just rewritten the scripts like they did in 1966, you know, when I wasn't supposed to be in, as a companion for the next three stories, I, they kept just giving me lines from, from Ben and Polly and, you know, yeah. until they, they were in that, so I'm sure J&T would have, because they didn't have a male companion and I got on well with Nicola Bryant and I got on well with Colin. And you could have ended up meeting the Daleks again and any of the trial of time lords. So yeah. That's a whole level of fan. Yes. Which, uh, we can go it would, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was it like working with JNT? I liked him. Yeah. yeah I re- but apparently, if he didn't like you, then you were, you know, you, you've had it. But no, I always got well with him, and uh, we did conventions. We go to America, do con- American conventions. We'd always have a couple of Vera Vods, large vodka and tonics, you know. So he, he was, well, no, I, I liked him. I, I know there's quite a few people. Say so he wasn't good for the show. I thought he was very good for the show, and he was, he was up 
not for himself all the time. Well, you know, he's, we're all here to make money and look after ourselves, but I always got very well with him, always. And he never tried to shut me up my kilt either. <laughs> yeah. Neither did Gary. Boys, yeah. <laughs> they knew it'd be wasting their time. <laughs> A lot of listeners will be, they won't forgive us if we don't ask at least some questions about Emmerdale. Mm. Now, at a few conventions ago, um, you had mentioned that you wouldn't be adverse to returning. Now, I know Emmerdale Farm, mm. old fan, old school fan, that's yep. what we'll always call it. Yep. Now, to Nida and all that nonsense, mm. and they've messed with the music, leave it, let it go. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. Would you still consider going back? I would, but I think my agent, uh, about a year ago, threw a pebble in the water and they said, no, the, the show's moved on now. I know the fans would like him back because I went yeah. to one of their big fan things it held in Leeds. And I thought, oh, am I wise because I'm one of the old guys and all the new guys. But I, I was so pleased that the fan came up to me yeah. and, oh, Fraser, you know, sign this, sign that. And the new guys were going, who, who the hell is he? Who's that bloke? Because they, they wouldn't know me from Adam. There's, there's so many young people nowadays, you know, like this Hollywood Oaks meets, you know, um, it, Home and away. It was just that with one of the characters, the last pseudo Sugden was talking about moving back to moving across to Spain. There was whispers that that was possibly a storyline. He was going to go. He would find you. You would come back and edit the farm. Yes, because I, I've always said that Joe died in a car crash in Spain. Was never but seen. Never seen. Uh, you know, if they really wanted it, that car crash could have been a stolen. You know, my car could have been stolen, mm -hmm. burnt out. The Spanish police find a body, registered to Jay Sugden, and. Was Spanish people being very l lazy. Oh, it is Joe Sugden, you know. Don't do DNA. So, and I could be, you know, amnesia. I, I could have done it to. Could have done it to get the insurance money. Yeah. All sorts of yeah. Things. So, yeah. But no, no. No. He's in a world of his own. <laughs> but, uh, but I want to come back to Doctor Who, you see. Uh, yeah. That's it. I want to that was my next question. Yeah. 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 But I haven't heard from Mr. Moffat yet. I haven't heard from Mr. Moffat. Yeah. It's just. Stephen, if you're listening. It's 18 yeah. months' time, isn't it? Yeah, 18 it is. months is the 50th anniversary. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so you haven't heard anyone being asked. Though you, if you had been asked, you would have been sworn to secrecy anyway. I, but I suppose so, yeah. Anyone being asked. But uh, I read that he's going to try and get all the doctors. Mm. Well, it's impossible for the first three. Yeah. You know, probably Tom wouldn't come back. But, you know, he's trying to get all the doctors together. So if I meet him, I say, if you don't want me back as Jamie, I'll come back as Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wear a black wig. That's the next question. Yeah, but now that you do the voice. Wear the black, you, you know, and I do that hand. In fact, when I'm doing the big finish, you know, they would say, it's amazing, but I have to do the hand movements. I can't just do Patrick like that. I have to go and do all that. And David Warner, I mean, when we do the big finish, uh, it hasn't come out yet, but it'll be advertised soon. I did one with David Warner. And we always take the mickey out. You know, actors always take the mickey out. I mean, if you're doing a Welsh accent, you say, is he meant to be Pakistani then? You know, <laughs> oh, we're bastards like that. We are. And we did this scene, and, and David, you know, one of our finest actors, actually said, I have to say, Fraser, that I've just done that scene with you, and I thought I was actually working with Patrick. And that is a great accolade for David Warner to say that to me, you know, one of our finest actors. And I was really chuffed. And again, that... I love talking about that story because it sounds like I'm blowing my own trumpet, but, you know, it is lovely for uh, an actor to say that to on, another actor. On this connected thing, when, when you talk to some actors who've been in Doctor Who, the, the person who plays the Doctor is usually either plays the Doctor as if it's an extension of their own character mm. or someone who's very different, mm. um, not naming any names because it's obvious. Mm. Was Patrick close to his portrayal in his childlike approach or...? No, 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 no. Patrick was um, the only uh, thing that didn't change from his everyday into the studio was his shoes. He wore those hush puppies to rehearsals, and he wore them as the, as, as the doctor as well. He wore his own shoes, but everything else was no, no. He he, he switched. That was that was the doctor. Oh, that wasn't Patrick. Uh, you know, he, he had a twinkle in his eye. He, he liked the ladies, so did I, which was great. But no, he was. Um, quite serious in, in a lot of things he'd, he'd, he'd love a gag mm -hmm. but no he, to me he and he was a believer to me I was think you know there's a couple of doctors with Patrick at the end of the the episode you think oh god he could die where some of the, the later doctors no no he'll, he'll get out of this he'll find a way but Patrick you know his face go, oh no no stop it he's like, the water's right but I was I'd love to 
were, uh, people say we, when you left the show, I said, we would never have left if we'd known Leela was going to be a companion. <laughs> <laughs> but can you imagine Leela and Jamie? We're the only two companions that carried knives, you know. Knives none of these. <laughs> no, knives and skirts. Showed our legs. But you're right, you know, we think none of the other ca- companions were armed. I mean, Brigadier wasn't a companion. Captain Yates wasn't a companion. But can you imagine, the, the, Patrick, you know, the water's rising, the snakes, the alligators are about to come down the chute, and I'm about to cut his ropes, and Leela says, I'll cut the ropes, I'll cut. In the end, Leela and Jamie are wrestling on the floor, fighting each other to, to who's going to... And the doctor says, for God's sake, what have you just cut? <laughs> I've always... I have, I have this fantasy. Find a way of doing that, that. That's got to happen. I have my, this fantasy in my mind of, of Leela and Jamie fighting each other. I use my knife. I use my duck. No, I use my knife. Mm-hmm. I use my duck. No, my knife. And we're, you know, you know and, and in the end, I, Jamie wins... Ties Leela up and then uh, <laughs> resting. <laughs> That's a different type of fantasy. <laughs> I, I, With I, the rope, he's just cut the pat- Patrick free from this. I want you to cast your memory back for a bit because uh, I got an iPad recently. I'm a Doctor Who fan. What do I put on an iPad at first? A lot of old Doctor Who episodes. And I was watching The Invasion on the train up here yesterday. Oh, yeah. I watched the second half of it in the hotel last night. Are they good iPads? Because I'm thinking of getting one myself. That, that, that was a lovely evening. Chips, sausages, <coughs> second <coughs> half of the invasion on an iPad. And so I just wanted to ask you, what are your memories of working on the invasion? Uh, and do you really recommend iPads? Yeah. Mm. Well, yes. That's what we need yes. to know. We the I, I, no, ignore I, the I in, do. In Other tablets are available. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Because, no, I'm thinking of getting one, but... Uh, because I've got one of those ITHTC phones, mm. and I took it to Turkey. I thought, oh, I have to get my emails. No, you know, it wouldn't. Couldn't get a signal, and so you still need to get a signal with an iPad. Well, my, my one's Wi-Fi, so you need you need a, you need the Wi-Fi internet to be on. Oh, on a train, okay. Or, yeah. Or, on a train? Well, some trains have got the Wi-Fi. Some trains yeah. have not got the Wi-Fi. It's a very strange world we live in now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But Wi-Fi do you put a SIM card? Around. Do you put your SIM card into it? No, no, no. My, my one is Wi-Fi only. That was expensive enough. <laughs> oh, right, okay. But you, you can get ones with, with a SIM card, though, can't you? Mm. Yeah. 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 You get a talk with, with your can phone company, though, apparently. Oh, right. Oh, okay, all right. I mean, yeah. I, I just kind of take mine out and go, it's an iPhone. It's an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the invasion... Yeah, well, I remember working with dear Dougie Canfield, who was always a, a lovely director. Um, quite dour, but he... He would let you put comedy in. Derek Martinus was another director that, you know, wouldn't put his arm around you. Have you heard of one about the two nuns in, uh, in, in the pub with the Alsatian dog? But they would let you, you know, they knew at rehearsals, if you were giggling, they knew that get the giggles out in rehearsals. Because if you try and do it serious all week, by the time you get to the studio, yes, that's when you get the giggles. And then the tape's running, it's costing money. He knew if we fooled around at rehearsals, we would do it on the night. So, so, uh, but it was that thing in the invasion where Patrick and I were walking down the street in his car, and I just said, Dougie, can we do one of those kind of you know, cartoon runs? Is that even? I said, Well, you know, we start to walk, then we walk a bit <laughs> fast, and in the end, uh, you know, and we're running the arch back, you know, like the road runner. He said, Yeah, okay, we'll do that. And that's how we, you know, mm. and then when we get cornered, Patrick said, I, I think I did, go pack a, and he start to play cards, you know, <laughs> and Dougie, yeah, what would you do? Patrick's, his pockets. That doctor, you th- if you brought a rope ladder out, you could... <laughs> a rope just, it's just... AK-47, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you could believe. It swings around, that story. It's, it's very dark. There's people running around with guns. There's people getting shot in it. And then there's these great moments between you and Patrick, the, the, the little comedy bits which you've come up with, which obviously weren't on, That's the, like, on the script no. written. And, and it, it just, just makes it... So, and and the, 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 the scenes between Patrick... And, and the, the, the baddie of the piece. Yeah, they, they, Kevin they, Stoney. Kevin Stoney, they just work. Yes, Marvel. And I, th- I think the way Douglas Canfield shot that story... Pecker, it's still, pecker. It's yeah, still yeah. You can watch it now, mm. and it's shot as well as anything that's shot well now. It is. Um, and you, you I was saying in the, in the talk on the stage, you know, yeah, sure you can look at it now and go, oh, those levers are dreadful you can tell they're, they're ping pong balls and things. but that's what the guys had to use at the time they didn't have CGI you know they, they were given a box of ping pong balls elastic bands and stuff and sprayed silver you know, that's what they you know and when you think that's what they were, that's the tools that they were given they did marvellous jobs building sets and that you know the um, invasion the, the 
when he's, the thing slides back and you see that sort of cyber leader or whatever, you know, fantastic swinging around. And, and in, in the mind robber, that lovely thing at the back, you know, changing, the, 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 fantastic, you know. But the, um, that, that's what I remember. And, and of course, me seeing John Levine, John Levine's face for the first time. Because up until then, he'd been a Yeti, John Levine. Then we saw Benton when he got out of the, the Jaguar car. I'd, I'd forgotten he was in it. I was watching it yesterday. Oh, of course, John Levine. John Levine was a unit, the unit guy. Yeah. And of course, you know, meeting Nick Courtney again. You know, it was fantastic, it was lovely. But that was, that was, yeah, that was it. Not that uh, really changed the tack too much, but when you were upstairs um, talking to everyone, thank you for not walking away from this just yet. <laughs> But um, you were talking about um, your recent uh, health issues. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just thinking, we've got between us, we've got what, about ten thousand listeners. Is there any? And it was a very positive message you were giving out. And I'm thinking that a lot of people listening now well, it, uh, might yeah. want to hear something. Yeah, well, I, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I said earlier, I, I had bowel cancer uh, about twelve years ago. It gone through the bowel wall, so I had to have chemotherapy, and I was about to start pantomime. And uh, I was told by my oncologist, no, you'll be tired, you'll have, you have a cannula in your arm. And I asked the producer of the panto, who was a pal of mine, Christopher Marino, what shall I do? And he said, well, uh, do the panto. And if you collapse, if you get tired, uh, I'll just go on with the script and, and play your part. And uh, so I had chemotherapy in the morning, do the matinee, do the evening panto, go home, drive to Nottingham, chemotherapy in the morning, afternoon show, you know, just I was doing that for about five weeks, and my hair actually grew during the pantomime. It actually, I, but I didn't tell anybody I was having chemo because I didn't want to be treated differently. Like, don't do the so and so speech, and we'll cut you from that tap dance. I just want to be treated normally, and I've still got the box of pills sealed because I never felt nauseous. And I try to get this message across to people: if you've got bowel cancer, don't look at, don't listen to the word chemotherapy as a, as bad. I had chemotherapy. And that's being pumped into you, and that's killing the bad guys inside you. The chemotherapy, people think, oh, sort of Damocles, chemotherapy, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. No, that's actually, and myself and Mr. Whitaker, we used to laugh, you know, in the morning, we'd go into the oncology unit, little room, and go, hello, Tonto, hello, chemotherapy. You know, with all the, <laughs> and two of the patients complained to the nurse, uh, and the sister said, no, I wish you had Mr. Hines' and Mr. Whitaker's outlook in life. That's the way to treat chemotherapy. Don't think, uh, mm. think that. And um, I'm, I'm trying to get out, get with bowel cancer charity, to, you know, to, to help them out. And I just I made up this slogan, you know, if you feel anything wrong with your insides or you see something in, in the loo that you don't like, you know, don't be embarrassed. I just say, you know, my my saying is, would you rather a doctor took your trousers off once or an undertaker take them off forever? Well, thanks for being on that note. <laughs> yes, oh, yes. Thanks yeah. for being able to talk so yeah. about mm -hmm. it because a lot of people. But when, when I kind of went, went, went when I went public with it, you know, mm -hmm. I couldn't for the first five years because the first five years is the, there was the worst, you know, and also I had to keep it quiet after that because you you can't do television or film because it says if you've got this this you know and if you start TV series and then they can sue the pants off you. Whereas a theatre is different because you've got an understudy, mm -hmm. you know. So if you break your leg, if you collapse. You know, a theatre, you've always got an understudy, but with films or TV, the TV company, you know, and nowadays, as I say, you have to tick, have you got cancer, have you done this, have you, you know, all these things, because they, they've got to cover their ass, so to speak. Actually, no, we're ending on a positive note. Yeah. Yes. That's what it is, yeah. it's not yeah. just a down. So, thank you very much. No, talking. pleasure. Unless anyone thank else you has got any questions? No. Okay. Well, thank you very much. All right, pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. All right, thank you. That's like the Steve Wright Show. And he's resigned. <laughs> You have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk.